What is up guys, this is Rehart aka Deadbird, the mobile gamer you should be fearing. And with me is Neo from TheOverclocker.com. How's it, Neo? What are we talking about today? So we're talking about the latest graphics cards, including the latest Ampere graphics cards from NVIDIA, the latest CPUs from Intel, and mostly AMD. And why and we should be spending money on these things, right? Uh, of course, okay? The best gaming mm -hmm. is always going to be in the most powerful hardware. So <laughs> let's take it from there. Let's get into it. So before we get started, we do need to acknowledge this new weird digital rage we are all doing. And I'm Act 5 Alpha 1, I'm very excited about it. Coming to you straight to your living room, as they say, and being able to share all this good information, which wasn't always possible with the physical rages, right? I mean, a lot of people yeah, pretty much. don't get all the information, but now you get everything at your leisure. And unfortunately, these are the times we live in. Yeah, of course. And I mean, this is not the first digital show that you've actually seen. We've had Sony do their presentation, Microsoft, Nintendo, everybody's going digital. And here we are with Rage 2020 going digital as well. We've certainly been talking about this for long enough. Let's, let's, let's get into the hardware. Exactly, which is what we all came here for. So Neo, this has been, what, is this 10 years in the making? This video show that people are watching right now, can you believe it? Yes, it's been taking quite a while for us to get this thing together, but here we are talking about the latest tech and right in front of us is what? How can we ignore this? Of course, the beast, the card that's got everybody talking, the GeForce RTX 3080, okay? So this card is basically the second generation of the cards that can do real-time ray tracing, which was a big deal, mm. right? Which was a 20 series, right? There was a 20 series, and everybody used to complain that it's slow, it looks great, but you cut your frame rate Battlefield in half. one looks so beautiful, right? Exactly, but now we have something that's got so much computing power that you can actually do your ray tracing and get 60 FPS at like the highest resolutions, including 4K gaming, which for the first time is actually a real thing. You know, before they would tell us, oh, this one can do 4K gaming, but you always had to make these weird little sacrifices. Now it's actually full on 60 FPS gaming and we can do that with the RTX 3080 for the first time and 3090 as well. Now, I don't know about you guys and everything that Noah's saying sounds pretty wonderful, but I got a mild heart attack when I saw the pricing of these things. I mean, we don't have the exact pricing at the time, at the time of recording, it's a little bit before, but what yeah. are these things going for now? If you are able to get them in stock, which has been the biggest issue right now, most people have not been able to get this in stock, and I'm sure some of you have had troubles trying to order these and getting them in, okay? But you're looking at at least about 18 grand minimum, going all the way to 40 something grand, and that's for the 3090, but you can get into this for under 20 grand. Okay, so it's not that much more than what the previous generation used to be. One of the things about the 3080 though is, and correct me if I'm wrong here, this is not just a card for gamers. Even though it's got the best performance across the board from any NVIDIA graphics card to date, these are more than gaming cards, right? I mean, they are designed for serious graphics work too. Oh yeah, for sure. In fact, actually for streamers, you and myself included here, there's actually some cool technology that NVIDIA showed off that allows you to basically use AI and replace your green screen and do all sorts of things like that. So they actually are catering to more nice. than just gaming. And they're also catering to the computing crowd as well, because this has phenomenal amounts of compute performance. So if you're the kind of person that does 3D work and so forth, you can actually benefit from the Ampere graphics card more than you would any other generation before. So we have streamers that are catered to with this card. We have professional workloads that are catered to this card. And we have, of course, gaming, right? So it actually satisfies so much more than the previous generation. Like so many more people can actually invest in a graphics card and actually derive value from it more than in just gaming. Unlike previous cards, this thing is truly a multifunction um, peripheral. It's definitely. So what NVIDIA usually does is they make the difference between their Titan series, which can do much higher rates of double precision compute operations than these retail cards. But even having said that, these are so much more powerful than when we had before. Look at it like this. So this 3080 is actually more powerful than all previous Titan GPUs. And that's saying something because Titan GPUs were for a professional class, for everybody who was invested in GP, GPU computing and all things like that. So these actually take that from that market, that really expensive market, and make it available for everybody. This is more power than what used to cost 2,000 US dollars a few years ago, if not last year. Now, I'm the kind of gamer that's of the mindset, and of course, I know that there's guys out there that want the latest and greatest. Yes, I'm looking at you sitting on the couch. You want this card, and you're gonna spend all your money trying to get it. 
But you don't need it, right? Like average gamers or gamers that want really good experience, uh, you can probably get a bargain on the 20 series cards now. Definitely, you can even get a bargain on the 10 series card. So one of the things that I've actually been working on is asking the question, is the 10 series graphics card still relevant in 2020? And surprisingly, I actually did all the testing and I found that it actually games and plays all the games at very high resolutions at maximum graphics. Of course, you're gonna be limited to maybe full HD, but most people are still playing Full HD. If you look at the Steam statistics, most people are still playing Full HD. So Pascal is still very relevant and you can pick that up for next to nothing. Secondhand market has a lot of 10 series graphics cards. So any one of you who still has a 10 series graphics card, don't feel that you're not gonna be able to use it anymore. That's me. It really still is working and you can play all the games. I played Horizon, I played Mafia, I played Borderlands 3. Everything on the 10 series still works. Now, what about the 3080 versus the 3090? Because the 3080 is already top of its class. Yes, for 30, sure. 3090, like that's just a whole different beast altogether, isn't it? Oh yeah, and the price has a price to match as well. I don't think there's a 3090 <laughs> you can get for less than, what, 40,000 or something like that. And that's an exorbitant amount of money to ask for a graphics card. But having said that, it that is, is one of the first graphics cards that you can play 8K gaming on. Wow, so everybody can play. Nobody can play 8K gaming. Precisely Maybe Linus Tech Tips has got some exactly. set up there. 8K gaming on this LG ZX series 88 inch OLED gaming grade TV with the RTX 3090, the first legitimately 8K capable graphics card in the world. Most people don't have the screens and things. If any of you have an 8K display, then yeah, you definitely need Comment below and let us know. Because yes, let us know how it's like. It's a unicorn at this point. Exactly. So to get like the ultimate gaming experience, you're obviously going to be using a 3090 and an 8K display and all sorts of things. And also the latest uh, CPUs as well. And we shouldn't forget about that. Or, or what, uh, what's the minimum uh, CPU you recommend? For these cards, you definitely want something that has six cores at least. Okay. okay, you want six cores at as high frequency as possible. So I would think for a 3080, you're probably looking at like a, a Ryzen 7 3800X or 3700X. And for the Intel side, you're probably looking at a Core i5 10600K, if you are able to get that, because these have been very difficult to get a hold of. I mean, you make it, you raise a very good point now, especially in the Intel versus AMD. I mean, that has been one of, it's one of the oldest, I guess, feuds in computing history. Yeah, but Intel versus AMD now, it's, uh, I mean, it's a different competition. Oh, AMD is kicking ass. Oh, definitely. But these things are gonna happen with technology. You wanna have one person lead and another person will take over and then it goes, swings back and forth and that's how we make progress. But Intel just hasn't seemed to be able to break that, uh, Oh, that yeah. barrier for the last while at least. Well, you have to consider as well then, remember when the, we were still working at the office at, at, at NAG. Oh, uh, old NAG days. Exactly, at Shout the NAG out. days. So we Shout still out. had um, the Core 2 that came in and that literally changes the computing landscape. And for 10 years straight, Intel was leading with the core technology. Mm. So they're from 2006 up until 2016, they were unmatched and unchallenged. Right, so this recent resurgence from AMD is great and we have to see how long it will go on. Right, The last one was 10 years by Intel. I doubt if this one will go on 10 years, but it is something exciting to see, particularly because AMD generally prices their products lower than Intel. Oh, which that, means right? more people can start gaming. Okay, so you don't always necessarily have to spend 10 grand on a CPU. You can get, you can spend I think 3,000 Rand on the latest AMD 3500X. Not bad. Yes, and that's available at WooWare for like 3,000 Rand. And that basically plays all your games as well as you would expect any other CPU costing twice as much would. What next for, for gaming hardware? I mean, CPU obviously sorted, graphics cards now sorted. What next? What's the other thing that we need to be looking out for that is going to be game changing? Displays. Okay, we've had displays and oddly enough, a lot of technology that comes into PC gaming displays actually comes from smartphones. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have gaming displays now that use AMOLED mm -hmm. displays. Obviously, they're hideously expensive. That's why they're so expensive and that's exactly. all the device, right? Which you're not gonna get a better display than what you get from AMOLED. Okay, and that literally came from uh, smartphones. But what you are able to get now is FreeSync, HDR, and everything else that just makes the visual presentation of the game much richer than it otherwise would be. More than just pushing out high frame rates, you want to display that soft. Also needs to. It also needs to keep exactly. up with it, right? Yes. Now, 120 versus 
60 versus 90 versus 120 frames per second, hertz, screens. What is your opinion on those? Because people are always pushing for the, for the highest frame rate, but at some point, kind of caps, right? For visual pleasure. You know what? I used to say that 60 hertz is more than enough. And then I started actually experiencing anything higher than 60 hertz. It definitely makes a difference. Just how much smoother your gameplay is. It's, even if you're not a professional gamer, a lot of the examples that are made when they talk about the advantages of having a 144 hertz display, they're talking about professional gamers, but it actually makes a difference for even casual gamers mm. as well. Particularly if, let's say you're not able to get an RTX 3080 and you have something like a 1070, which was a very popular graphics card. If you have a display that can do 100, 100 hertz, 120 hertz, that can literally make up for your GPU not having enough computing power okay. because you're not skipping as many frames. You understand? And obviously so, can deliver those, yeah, yeah. Exactly, so you are able to sync that up. You're not having the issue of your graphics card is only putting out 25 frames per second, but you display it at 60, 60 hertz. So that mismatch might not necessarily work, but now you have things like free sync yes. that allow your display to match up with your... With and it's your much cheaper brand. monitors than the G-Sync monitors, much right? Much cheaper monitors as well. And these are becoming so commonplace now. Almost every gaming monitor is FreeSync compatible. And FreeSync is now GeForce compatible, excuse me. Yes, yeah, they yes. unlocked that feature for, exactly. yeah, for, for graphics, GeForce card users. Precisely. Whatever happened, just to sidetrack with you, whatever happened to the Radeon cards, graphics cards, AMDs? At the time you guys see this, the presentation would have happened already. So check that out. I think it's on the 20, 28th of this month of October. Mm -hmm. AMD is going to give us some more information on their latest big Navi graphics card. So that's the 6000 series. As you know, right now, we only have the 5000 series. So this is the next generation. And that's looking kind of promising. We didn't get enough details when they revealed the new CPU about it, but they did mention that you can play Borderlands 3 at the highest graphics fidelity at 4K at over 60 FPS. So that puts it dangerously close to this, but knowing AMD pricing, it might even come in at a lower price than this. So that's pretty exciting. And there should be a little premium in performance if you're running it on an AMD board with a CPU. I would hope so. Same right. family. I, yeah, I would hope yeah. that there's some... Something you won't get with GeForce necessarily and Intel. Precisely. I would hope so that there's some sort of advantage in being in the same ecosystem, if you will. Exactly. Like right. some kind of certification for some other boards where they Precisely. do get that little That would be really, that would be really awesome. It would be something pretty interesting to test. But now, say so we've talked about monitors. Obviously, 4K yeah. is kind of the sweet spot at the moment. But on the other side of the graphics card, we have the consoles. Oh, yes. And that's the other side of gaming because for the price of one of these, you can almost buy a next generation console and a screen, right? That's, that's actually very true. A lot of the times we don't want to discuss that, that uh, PC gaming is inherently expensive. It is more cost effective for people to buy consoles at least in the beginning. For instance, if you buy the latest, what were the PS3 prices? The digital one is 10 grand? 10 or, yeah, 10 or 12 yeah. or something. Yeah. 10 grand and then 10 yeah, grand. obviously the disc, the disc version is a little bit more than that. So if you think about it, you can buy the disc version and buy a few games, perhaps an additional controller for the same price that you would pay for one graphics card. That is yeah. a real thing. Although the games, don't the games cost like a grand themselves? Or Precisely. Rand or something so that's silly. the offset as well. Right? Running costs of the setup. The running costs are going to be pretty high. However, having said that, we are in a time and in a place where gaming looks so phenomenal and we're all sharing hardware, we're sharing so many things that I think whether you go PC gaming or console gaming, you're still going to get the best gaming has ever had to offer. Oh, yeah. Literally. Totally. All of these things, I mean, obviously it's a different its a different thing altogether. PC gaming is kind of a very, in my opinion, an isolated experience. You sit in front of your machine and you kind of focused on it, right? Oh, yeah. Console gaming is the same, but also you can have the living room experience where you kind of sit with your friends and play games. Mobile gaming is a combination of the two without kind of necessarily having all those, I mean, you're playing different type of games, right? You still have very good visual quality games, but you're not playing the, the latest and greatest titles that kind of you would get on these. And, and it's fair enough. I mean, you're not expecting to get 
um, you know, to run all of these latest titles on a mobile phone, but it's a different gaming experience in between gaming experience almost. And um, I'm very excited about that. But I think I'm excited about getting back into PC big time by upgrading, because I think now it's an opportunity for PC gamers to get good, quali well, good quality hardware for cheap, buying second hand stuff, you know, especially if people are upgrading to 3080. And the benefit of you know being in control of your hardware and your software and doing what you want to do. So if, if that geekery um, interests you, right, then PC is still definitely the way to go. Oh, for sure. If you just want to sit and play, which a lot of people want to do, put, in, put on the console, 10 cents later you in your game, then console is the way to go. Yeah, that's where we are now. I think uh, it's a very exciting time for any type of gamer. I think that is really the, 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 the main takeaway. That's the takeaway, important yeah. thing, yeah. It's, it's a really fantastic time for everybody. If you look at even the peripherals that we have now, they're better than ever before. The customizations visually. So now it's almost pieces that can become a visual representation of what you find aesthetically pleasing. It's no longer just uh, people looking at oh, this one is mechanical switches, this one can respond at a thousand hertz or whatever. It's none of that. It's more like, how can I express myself using PC hardware? The RGB fans, the RGB headset like this one, RGB mouse. Uh, there's even an RGB uh, mouse pad, oddly enough. Yeah, and I saw I was, that. Crazy. I was, I was one of the people who used to say, oh, I don't want RGB on my computer hardware. But then I actually came around because as it, start, it started to get a little bit better, I started to realize that, wow, this actually looks pretty, pretty cool. And now where we have the control over our RGB lighting, you can basically make your computer look like anything you want to make it. I think peripherals have branched out from just being a functional thing to being an expression of your aesthetic appreciation oh, totally. for things. Isn't the PlayStation's removable covers also going to see some Ooh, customization capability? Definitely. I cannot wait to just start uh, actually seeing what people come up with. You know, you can imagine all the skins that people will have. Uh, even the 3D printing of the actual oh, panels. Oh yes, uh, people are going to be totally be doing that. Exactly. Because so then you can build onto it. You can actually build Precisely, you things. can build all these things onto it. And that's actually one of the advantages that I see with the PlayStation over the Xbox in terms of what visual representation, in terms of expressing yourself as a gamer. You can probably skin an Xbox, but it's still a box. Well, look, one place where I know that this is taking us, and this is, uh, this is something where graphics, I think a lot of these graphics cards are probably shaking their boots a bit, is the streaming services. And again, we're gonna have a full-on conversation about it, but we can't not mention it now. Definitely. Because that, in many ways, makes a lot of the hardware irrelevant once True. that becomes a full thing. You'll still need a decent PC uh, because you'd want to run other things, I'm sure. That's choice. But choice, yeah, yeah exactly. But choice. Exactly. Yes, that, that is something that's inevitable. We are heading towards a world where we're basically streaming a lot of the content that we're using. I mean, if you look at it right now, there was a time when people needed big hard drives because they had movies and all sorts of things. People don't use that anymore. We have streaming services. So all of those things are now available for everybody. And soon enough, you actually won't need to own the hardware. Okay, you can stream to any device you have. And of course, you yourself can, from your powerful computer, can stream to your smartphone. Which is another very exciting, very exactly. exciting thing. Okay, you don't always have to get it from the cloud. Maybe we should ask the viewers now who's watching, just in terms of your gaming preference. I mean, we're talking about PC, console, or mobile gaming. And I mean, what's the third? Mobile, mobile can be broken down into Nintendo as well, in a way. Nintendo Switch, I mean, how would you classify that? That's also a that is actually incredibly more popular gaming. mobile platform. That is, you, that, you take that, it that definitely is. So let us know in the comments below, or drop below a message, let us know what platform you prefer. And uh, yeah, we'll try and interact with you and let you know what, what our favorites are. So now before we get into the kind of evolution of this topic, which is the conversions of all these technologies and where the future of gaming is really going, let's wrap up this conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you everybody for watching. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, Neo. Thank you, Rakhard. We'll see you guys soon.